Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up Ryujin Simulator on your PC in order to get the best possible performance. On top of this, I'm also going to be showing you how to use their brand new features which include resolution scaling and a brand new function which allows you to play in online multiplayer over the internet absolutely for free. This new LDN online feature allows you to play multiplayer in games like Mario Kart 8, Animal Crossing New Horizons, Pokemon Sword and Shield, Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, Splatoon 2 and many many more and as I said, this guide is going to show you in the easiest way possible how to set up this new feature on top of all of the other steps and settings you need for the best stability and performance when running any of your games. Everything covered in this video is pretty simple, all you need to do is follow along and do exactly what I do. Let's jump straight across to my desktop and get our setup started. Getting this emulator set up and running on your PC is super, super easy. However, there are a few files you're going to need in order for this emulator to function at all. The first of these files is your prod.keys or switch decryption keys, and the second is either an XCI, which is a game cart dump, or the raw firmware, which you can dump from your Nintendo Switch. If you're looking for a guide on dumping these from your Switch, you'll find one over on my Discord server. Once you have them, you're going to come to this address, reusings.org forward slash download, and since this guide is centered around Windows, we're going to click this Windows icon to download the latest master build, then I'm going to save this to my desktop. Once it has finished downloading, you can see right there it is. I'm going to come back to my desktop, then I'm going to right click it, and then using 7-zip, I'm going to select Extract Here. This is going to extract it to a folder called Publish. Once it has finished extracting, you're going to right click this, select Rename, and then rename this folder Reusing Master. It is this master version we're going to be setting up. Once you have it renamed, you can delete the zip file from which you got it. Now that you have it renamed, you're going to come back to your browser, then head on over to the Reusing Patreon page. You're going to scroll down the page until you find this post for introducing LDN2. This special build enables online multiplayer through the LDN feature, which I'm going to be showing you how to set up in just a few minutes. Now don't worry, you don't have to pay anything, these bills are available absolutely for free, so what we're going to be doing is clicking one of these two links to download the build we prefer. I'm going to select this one since this is a Windows installation guide. Again, I'm going to save this to my desktop. Once it's finished downloading, you can minimize your browser. As we did before, you're going to be right clicking this new zip, then selecting with 7-zip to extract here. This again is going to give you another publish folder. Once this has finished extracting, we're again going to right click, select rename, except this time you're going to call this build Reusing LDN. This is an entirely separate build you're going to be using to play online multiplayer using this emulator. The next thing we want to do is set up Reusing Master. This is the build we're going to be taking all of our main settings from. However, before we do anything, you want to scroll down this page, specifically looking for this file right here. OpenAL32.dll. You want to highlight this file, select right click, and then copy it. Then what you want to do is you want to come to your Reusing LDN build and paste this file into this folder. By doing this, you will not have to install OpenAL on your own computer. Instead, it's going to use this OpenAL DLL for the OpenAL audio backend this emulator requires. Again, let's reopen our Reusing master folder. If the exe doesn't appear at the top like so, you just click the type button until it does. Then we're going to be double clicking and launching the emulator for the first time. Now you're going to get this key error the very first time you launch this emulator if you've never set it up. I'm now just going to show you how you can install your prod.keys file. You want to come to file, open Reusing's folder, then into this system folder you simply drag and drop your prod.keys file. Once you have this done, your decryption keys are installed. You now need to close, then reopen the emulator in order to properly initialize those keys. Next, we're going to be installing our firmware. As I said at the start of this guide, there are two ways to install firmware, either through an XCI or through a switch firmware which you have already dumped. Realistically, it does not matter which method you use to install this firmware, the only important thing to do is make sure that the firmware you install is firmware 5.1.0 or higher. You can see here that this XCI is going to install firmware 9.2.0. I'm just going to click yes, then click OK, and you can see in the bottom right hand corner that system version 9.2.0 is installed. 
Again, if I wanted to install the latest firmware, which I have personally dumped from my Switch, all I need to do is find the firmware folder, you can see the one I have on my desktop here, select open, it's going to install firmware 11.0.1, .1, which is the latest I have dumped from my Switch, and there you go, in the bottom right hand corner you can see system version 11.0.1. .0 .1. As I previously said, it does not matter which way you install your firmware, all that does matter is that you have a firmware that is 5.1.0 or later installed on the emulator. The next thing you want to do is close, then reopen Reusinx. Once it's reopened, you're going to come to Options, then once this opens, you're going to come to Settings. What you want to do is set up your game directory. This is the folder in which you have stored all of your Switch games, be them XCIs or NSPs. Mine are stored right here in this Switch games folder. All I have to do is click add and you can see this directory has been added to the games list. Once I click apply, you should see the games list populate in the rear of the window. Next up, we're going to be setting up our controller inputs. All you have to do is come to this input tab. I would advise enabling docked mode, then clicking configure under player one. In this area, you can see it's quite self-explanatory. You have input devices, controller types, and then controller profiles. I'm just going to select my own X input controller from this list. Then for controller type, I'm going to select pro controller. Then for profile, I'm going to select this default profile, though you can see I have some other profiles set up. Just select default, then remember to hit the load button to make sure that these keybinds are correctly loaded. Now, in the event that you do want to add another controller profile, just like I've done, you can select any profile like so, then if you want to add a new one, just click this add button here. I'm just going to call this new to, then click OK. Once I come to my profile list, you can see that this new to profile has been added. Please make sure to hit the load button anytime you select a new profile. To activate motion controls, if you're using a pro controller through BetterJoy or a DualShock 4 through DS4 Windows, make sure to enable motion controls. This will just automatically work as long as you enable motion controls and have the setting enabled in those applications. Please make sure to hit the save button in the bottom right hand corner once you're happy with your controller configuration. Setting up additional controllers for local multiplayer games is as simple as I've just shown. Please make sure to follow the previous steps if you want to set up additional controllers. In this system tab, there are several things you may want to change. For example, you may want to change your region and also your system time zone. Some games like Animal Crossing and New Horizons are very sensitive to these time zones. Certain in-game clocks or mechanics may not work if you do not have your correct time zone set. Since I myself am in the Europe Rome time zone, I'm just going to select that. Please be aware that these system time zones will not all correctly display if you do not have your system firmware installed. I would also highly advise enabling this ignore missing services setting. It can greatly help with game compatibility. In this graphics section, you want to make sure that enable shader cache is enabled, and if you want to resolution scale your games, meaning play them at resolutions of 1440p, 4K or higher, you can set this in this resolution scale section. For now, I'm just going to leave this at the native of 720p, 1080p. Once you have applied all of these settings I've shown so far, you are basically now done with setup of this emulator. What you want to do is click the apply button, please make sure you do this, then click save to close this window. Next up, I'm going to show you how you can install your game updates and DLCs. When you right click on your game, you're going to see several options. From here, you can access save directories, bcat save directories, title updates, DLCs, mods, and many, many other things. You also have the ability to purge your PPTC and shader caches in the event that either of those corrupt and are causing any of your games to fail to boot. If you want to install an update on this emulator, you click manage title updates, you can see here I have two updates installed already for Animal Crossing New Horizons. If you wish to install a different one, you click the add button, then again navigate to wherever on your computer you have your updates stored. Mine are here in this switch dumps folder, my update folder, and as an example you can see I have this 1.2.1 update version. This is going to add it to this list, you can then select which update version you're going to use. For the most part, you are going to just use the latest update version that is available on your Nintendo Switch. This is especially important if you're going to be playing using the multiplayer feature I'm about to show you how to use. As always, make sure to hit the save button to make sure that all of this information is correctly applied. 
By scrolling back to the top of my games list and looking in this version tab, you can see the game update version your game is currently utilizing. Now, for Animal Crossing New Horizon on this emulator, there is currently a bug that causes a crash at the very start of gameplay. To get around this crash, you can do one of two things. The first of these is download this save file which you find in this video's description. Once this save file is in this folder, exactly like so, what you want to do is right click it, then select extract here. This is going to add this save to the emulator, meaning that you're going to be able to play this game. This save is a starter save, meaning it's basically a bare island, so you can just start your game from fresh and build your island from there. The second thing you can do, which many of you may want to do, is install Yuzu emulator on your system, start a new island, get to the point where your game saves, then transfer that save over to Ryujinx. While Yuzu does not crash the same way Ryujinx does, it also does not currently have this online multiplayer feature, so if you wish to create a new island on Yuzu and then transfer it to Ryujinx, that is definitely an option for you. As I stated previous, it's very important that you use your game's latest update. You can see here, for example, in Splatoon 2, I am using a 5.3.1. This is by far the most compatible update with this game. Further to this, when you boot a game for the very first time on this emulator, it can take a very long time to actually get in game the very first time. On subsequent loads, once you have built a shader and PPTC cache, which we enabled earlier, you are going to see these messages in the log window. You can see here that this is building the shader cache, which I have previously built for this game. By playing a game and building this shader cache, you are going to get dramatically less performance drops and stutter. The TLDR is, the more you play your game, the less stutter you're going to get. Now next up, we're going to be setting up the Ryujinx LDN build which we extracted earlier. However, before we do anything, you're going to want to do this. Open File Explorer, come to your C disk, your Users folder, your own username, then you're going to be looking for this App Data folder. If this App Data folder is not here, come to View, select Hidden Items from this option here, then you're going to open the App Data folder. Next, you're going to come to your Roaming folder, then you're going to come to this Reusing folder. From this folder, you need to copy this config.json file, then you're going to paste that into your Reusing LDN folder. At the moment, there is an issue where if you use Ryujinx's latest master build, then you use the Ryujinx LDN build for online multiplayer, it is going to dismiss or delete your settings every time you load either one of those emulators. So doing this is a workaround for that specific problem. When you load the Ryujinx LDN build after having transferred that configuration file, it should again refresh all of the settings we previously applied meaning that you for the most part have the emulator entirely set up already. The only difference, as I previously said, is that this build enables online multiplayer via the LDN feature. By coming to Options, Settings, you can see that in addition to all of these tabs, we now have this Multiplayer tab. The first thing you want to do is change the username from the default of player to your own specific username. You also have access to this network passphrase if you want to set a password for any of the rooms you create for the emulator. For the most part, I'd advise keeping this at clear. You also have this enable LAN connection. This enables you to play games from your Nintendo Switch to this emulator, which is a very, very awesome feature. Though this video is going to be concentrating on LDN, which is emulator to emulator connection. For the most part, you are going to be leaving this disable P2P network hosting disabled. Though, if you are getting a very, very poor connection to other players when hosting rooms, you should definitely consider enabling this, though for now we're going to keep it at disabled. Now that we have all of these settings and the emulator itself set up, I'm going to show you how you can set up, use or join this new LDN multiplayer feature using a few specific games, for example Mario Kart 8, Splatoon 2, Animal Crossing New Horizons and Pokemon Sword and Shield. For Mario Kart 8, it's very simple. Once at the title screen, you select Wireless Play, then you can either create or join an existing lobby. For an example, you can see there is already a lobby created, so I simply join it, select my cart and character, then I'm going to be put into a room with all of the other players. It's literally as easy as that. All you have to do is join the room or create a lobby yourself. This is going to allow you to play in online multiplayer with Mario Kart 8, and pretty much any other game you could want to play on this emulator that supports LDN. Yet another example of a very compatible game is Splatoon 2. In order to use this multiplayer function, all you need to do is make sure you're on the latest game update, then come to this room right here and come to the double doors. 
once you are loaded into the LDN or a local multiplayer lobby. As with Mario Kart 8 previously demonstrated, all you have to do is either find a room or host a room in order to play these multiplayer games in multiplayer modes. As before, all you have to do is tell other players that you have a hosted room. If you're looking for other LDN multiplayer players, you can find a lot of them over on the Ryujinx Discord, a link to which you will find down in this video's description. As you've seen, multiplayer in Mario Kart 8 and Splatoon works basically perfectly. However, there are many, many other compatible games you are going to be able to play in online LDN multiplayer using this emulator. To list just a few, we have Pokemon Sword and Shield, Splatoon 2, Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Animal Crossing New Horizons, and many, many more. If you need any additional help with getting any of these set up for online multiplayer, don't be afraid to either join my Discord or the Ryujinx official Discord, as I said, links to which you can find down in this video's description. For now, that's going to be it for this video. Once again, thank you all very much for checking it out, I greatly appreciate it. As always, if anything changes in respect to using this multiplayer feature or using Ryujinx itself, I will as always update this guide as soon as I possibly can, so make sure that you're subscribed to my channel to get notified as soon as any of those videos or guides go live. Once again, thank you all very much for watching, remember to like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.